name is Mike Musto. Each week I travel the country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of Big Muscle. Magazine clippings, tools, repair manuals, photographs, telephone numbers, scale models, a differential, and of course, an extra engine. These are just some of the things we found when we visited the garage of Chuck Rust. Now, on their own, these items wouldn't raise an eyebrow to most folks, but collectively and in this setting, they set the stage for one of the most diehard car guys we feature to date. The difference, however, between Chuck and the rest of the automotive populace, though, is that not only has he been racing his whole life, both on two wheels and four, but he had the innate ability and understanding to see how the Chevrolet Corvair, a car once deemed unsafe at any speed, can not only be improved upon, but with some extra hardcore modifications built into one hell of a performance machine. It all started, I, I had an El Camino and I was over in Manhattan Beach and, I, and uh, it had a healthy 350 in it and I'm coming off of the light and uh, right next to me is a white Corvair, which I had never even thought of Corvairs. I always had big Chevys. And so uh, I pulled ahead and we're going kind of up this uphill. He pulls up next to me and this is the key thing that really got me. He looked over at me and pulled right up next to me and turned a 90 degree and went down a side street. And I never forgot that. Uh, I pull up in my van at this party and there's the white Corvair. And I got out and I looked at it and oh my God, I gotta talk to this guy, you know? I put the word out and out into the universe too. And in two weeks, this car, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, I got, I got a car you gotta look at. And it was a complete basket case. It was all part of the guy had blown the transmission, but he rebuilt it and put it together and stuff. Anyway, long story short, I had sold my dirt bike for $2,500. How much did he want for this car? in its form, $2,500, it was perfect. Sometimes we come across a car that we look at and we go, I, I gotta film that, we have to film that. So a couple of weeks ago, Zach and I were walking through a car show and we happened upon this. We are right now behind the wheel of a 1965 Chevrolet Corvair Crown Corsair. This is something that I, I you know, I've read about them, but I've never actually seen before until we, we kind of stumbled upon this. What Chuck has done is actually taken one of the worst cars in history, and I'll be honest with you, made it one of the coolest that we've driven to date on Big Muscle. Think of it like this. The flat six engine that used to hang over the rear wheels is gone, and in its place is a mid-mounted 283 cubic inch V8 that revs to the moon and sounds glorious. Now. I've driven a Corvair before. In fact, I raced one in the 24 hours of the Lemons. It was the biggest POS I've ever driven to the point where you would step on the brake and you would turn left at the same time because the car just pulled to the right so bad. This car, holy crap, did he sort this thing out. I mean, you could bring it in, downshift, right? Pitch it into the corner and then just throttle it around. You've got no power steering, so you feel everything coming through and roll in and just let it rev and rev and rev and rev. Oh my God, now you gotta realize, it's not a massive, massive horsepower car. I mean, it's only about 310 horsepower, but it's the way that you can utilize that power that makes this car so good. He's figured out the handling of this car. He's figured out the way to make it work. He's, he's dialed it into a point where, guys, I could be driving a Porsche Cayman right now, and I got news, I wouldn't be having as much fun. This car is a visual and mental assault to the senses. I've got this massive race mirror up here. I can see everything that's going on. Not only that, I can hear everything that's going on because of the big V8 behind me. And holy shit, is it unbelievable. There were probably 2,500 kits made. And, on, and I was thinking last night, I'm just gonna say 50 in the, maybe 100 in the United States running 
and there's a lot more that aren't running. And then there's some in Europe, and there's some in Australia, some in Sweden. They're, they're all over the world, uh, but there's not very many running and that are set up. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what this car actually looks like. First of all, the Monza design is gorgeous. This is a really, really slick looking car. In stock form, you know, you might kind of pass it up, but the way truck has it done, it's great. From the gold paint to the black accents to the little skulls that run across the rocker panel, all these little touches lend to a really aggressive look and feel. This back panel and back of me is made out of a composite that it's not gonna scratch, and at the same time, it's totally vented to let heat out. You know, you guys are looking at me right now, and I'm, I'm wedged in this thing. I mean, I got, you know, basically, I can shift if I wanted to underneath my leg. That's how tight I am in, his, in this car. But I feel, I feel good, you know what I mean? And the, the cool part is, like, I look at my rear view mirror, and I see this big, massive air cleaner on the top of the motor, and every time I hit the motor, I can see it tweak like this. Guys, you gotta remember, I'm driving a Corvair. This is the car that Ralph Nader tried to get killed because he was like, it's unsafe at any speed. What Chuck has done to this car has not only made it good, he's made it brilliant. And oh my God, does it show. I mean, take it, drop it in. Oh my God, oh, look how scary. Drop it down in a second, throw it in, let it rev. Let it wind, let it wind, let it wind, shift up. Oh man, does it work. And it works really, really good. As far as balance and everything, it, it's it's near near perfect balance. It's a little bit heavier in the back, and uh, it's got a, a I believe a 55 45. And uh, I put I had to put big brakes on the front. I put uh, Corvette disc brakes from like a 78 Corvette. The car is light, and so it, it hauls it right down. Uh, sway bars front and rear which are available, but obviously a lot of these things are harder to find now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's got eight inch uh, rims with 245 5015s on the back and seven inch on the front. Now mind you, that's coming up from 13s. The stock is 13, some had 14s. So, you know, a 15 inch wheel and then going, and they were, I think, six inches wide. So we've widened it, we've, we've got a, a 225 50 15 with an eight inch print in the front and a nine inch in the back. It's got nine inches of rubber. I've lowered it, I've cut the coils and got it, got it down. And uh, so that, that seemed to be the hottest setup. If there's a theme that goes on throughout this car, I'd have to say it's balance. You know, he's gone through great pains in his garage, by the way, to make sure that this was a very well-balanced car. Everything was done for a reason, be it the large race style mirror so you can see all around you from the pressure of the clutch to the, you know, to the bump stop on the bottom of the clutch, to the gauge package, to the mirrors, to everything that's gone into this car to make it Chuck's own personal idea of what the perfect Corvair is. Now, you know, you got to remember also that this is the car that came before the Chevrolet Camaro. So you got to wonder, well, could this have been, if Chevrolet had maybe done a Corvair in a mid-engine, if this would have been the Corvette or kind of the, you know, the next rendition of the Corvette, could they have gone to a mid-engine if it worked better? I don't know. Little questions like that always kind of spark the old psyche. I don't think anybody would ever consider a Corvair a muscle car until they see the episode. You know, because nobody says, like, you know, hey, I'm gonna go hot around a Corvair. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen too often. People see this car and they go, oh my God, they got the motor in the back seat. Nine out of 10 guys go, that's where Chevy should have put it. That's what they should have done. And maybe someday the Corvette will be that. but. To right now, this is what it is, yeah. Sometimes we come across cars that not only surprise us, but inspire us. They go against the grain and conventional wisdom and they ask the question of what if? This Crown Corsa right here is such a car. And even though it's not the fastest car we've ever driven on Big Muscle, it's a rule breaker. And that's something, well, that this show is all about. 
you know, V8 engine in midsection, gone is the rear flat six motor. It does everything the way that owner Chuck Rust wanted it to do. So guys, as always, thank you for joining us and we will absolutely see you again next week on Big Muscle. Hey, that sounded pretty good. Yeah. Yahtzee! Yahtzee. <laughs> good, do you wanna try one more? I could do another one, but I'm okay. <laughs> I, think that, I think that works. All right.